It was going guys coming in here yesterday I made a community post uh, saying that I got interested in the game of Go and I experimented with some basic implementations of board representations and rules and coding and I was asking you to let me know if anyone is gonna get interested in uh, within this sort of a thing so to watch the series and programming a sort of a simple minimalist uh, Go engine and quite surprisingly, there were how oh, there was a whole lot of feedbacks, which which is quite were, rare. Uh, of those for this community post. So um, this is really flattering. And the first of all, I want to thank all of you guys uh, who actually got interested within this item. And definitely, we are going for a series about programming a very simple uh, engine uh, engine that would that is supposed to be playing the game of Go. And uh, it's, I believe this is the first step of a very big journey. And um, I'm personally, I, I, I'm extremely excited. But uh, just like, uh, just like it happens to, with chess in my experience. So when I, when I got interested in chess programming like several years ago, I was trying to get in and was looking for an entry point and whatever entry point I've been considering this was rocket science, kind of too complicated. Uh, and it wasn't possible for me or at that time uh, 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 assuming those skills I had back in the day in programming in general I couldn't I just I just couldn't get uh, get into it and I spent really lots of time trying to simplify things so so that the entry point would be quite uh, okay for me let's say and surprisingly well uh, if, if we have a look at the existing code uh, in regards to the go engine so uh, like the best, the, the world's best things like uh, Alpha Zero, uh, Alpha Go, uh, sorry, Alpha, not Alpha Zero, that's chess, so it's the Alpha Go, it's just a rocket science, so like <laughs> I, see the, I see the code and I, I don't understand a single thing there, so that's kind of too complicated for me, uh, that's real list, and as well as like uh, neural networks is something that I'm really frightened of, maybe one day and uh, even if we just uh, downshift to some uh, simpler implementations, still they are quite huge. And especially what I've uh, what, I, what I've encountered is the logic of implementing the games uh, of in, of implementing the rules of the game itself was a little bit too overwhelming as well. But surprisingly, surprisingly, I find uh, an extremely fantastic resource on uh, the program that allows us to get start to get started with Go. It's incredibly naive. It's plain very dumb Go, and uh, it seems like it doesn't make sense. However, it might serve as the starting point for kind of uh, like the first step within this big journey. And based on the principles. Uh, presenting that program, uh, we can then develop the ideas, and well, I don't know. So just it may get, it, it may go really like uh, quite far. So um, yeah, so it's, thanks thanks for all of your feedbacks. And in this video, uh, I want to demonstrate uh, the very quick and dirty implementation, uh, the, the uh, a very quick and dirty Python implementation of the pseudo code uh, that I got from uh, so there was a byte magazine uh, for April 1981 and there was an article uh, that, that is called programming the game of go by Jonathan K Millen and uh, what is absolutely uh, tremendous here is uh, so he created a go opponent called Wally uh, he was programmed on a Kim one so on key and one, you could have you, you could be programming using the 6502 machine codes, and this needs an extreme level of accuracy, and it need, it forces you to like design everything. You can't just start coding and see what happens. So you need to design everything. And one of the most significant limitations for key and one was the one k bytes of memory. So only one uh, kilobyte of RAM was available there, and that's ex ex extremely small amount of memory to to consider and even with this even with even within this limitations uh, what John and Millen uh, actually managed to do so he managed to make a program that plays a legal game of go well he wasn't he wasn't handling chaos if I'm not mistaken but uh, I assume the current implementation it works just as uh, well actually I didn't have that test that yet so I'm not sure 
and uh, there was some logic to where the suicide moves as well. But anyway, so that, that's not the major the, that's not the major case here. So uh, while this algorithm is based on essentially two capabilities, finding the liberties of a connected group and matching a few uh, common patterns. So uh, essentially, what this means, uh, so well, according to <laughs> what I've uh, what I managed to to figure out so far. So if you have uh, if you have uh, a group of stones and there is only one liberty left to enclose that so if you're if you don't know what the liberty is yeah, i recommend you reading about uh game a uh, game of go in, in wikipedia uh but uh during the series during the tutorial series of the videos uh that i'm, that I'm planning to further on i want to be explaining that in great detail so those who, who know what is that so liberty is uh like the escape square where the square can go so for instance uh for instance this square, uh, th this this stone has two liberties, so one and two. And for instance, here, so I just I was testing then. So here, the stone has only one liberty. So hence, it, if the uh, opponent puts the stone here like this, then the stone disappears, which means that it's captured. So either a single stone or a group of stones that ha doesn't have these liberties are considered to be the uh, to be, are considered to be captured stones. The overall uh, goal of the game is to gain more territory than opponent, and it's another very sophisticated sophisticated topic. So it took me uh, uh, quite, quite quite a bit of time to actually when when you're playing when you're losing a game of Go, trying to understand <laughs> why and actually you know like uh, when I just started to just losing the game and. I don't even know if I lose, if I lost already, or maybe not yet. So it was it was incredibly difficult for me to get into the rules. Hopefully now I managed to do that. So that's one of the good things to consider. And by the way, writing a Go playing program is is also uh, also very helps uh, in regards to understanding the uh, obviously the rules of the game and the scope of the game and some basic tactics as well so writing a, a program really helps me to proceed with the game and unlikely chess uh, so in chess you don't really need to be a good player to make it to write a strong en engine and in go uh, unless you're using neural networks this is not the case so if you're not using neural networks and handcrafting the evaluation then literally uh, whatever principles you know as a player uh, if you can code them, then this would improve your program. If you if you don't know some principles, then you don't code them, and your code is, and your program is as dumb as you. All right, so here uh, here are lots of uh, interesting things in, in regards to the rules as well, which in in many respects might be even more helpful. Like for for instance, the the, the explanation of liberties. So this uh, this probably was even more helpful th than that uh, Wikipedia article on, on the rules of the game because uh, when when it describes from from the implementation perspective it's really easier to uh, to understand like both the scope of the game and uh, the key the key moments the key points here so uh, this is the must uh, must read article for those who want to either uh learn the rules of the game because it's, it's especially it's really essential and for those who want to write a program this is essential as well and again like, you can't write the program that would play go if you don't understand the rules of go so yeah this definitely the very first thing to consider is to figure out the rules and probably uh i just thought that probably yeah it makes sense to make a separate video that would be explaining this kind of rules of go and i will probably be using even yeah, I'll probably use I'll already be using my my own implementation. Just that won't be making moves and response. So just just to give you an idea how what the both sides are about to try to achieve, let's say. And uh, he he explains through the program really a lot. So instead of providing the binary executable, there is no such and no paper tape as well. So unfortunately, I can't run this on my Q1 emulator. I, I would love to, but but I can. And here is the the output uh, within. Uh, uh, the, within the terminal, I believe. So it has quite quite pretty, like 16 or yeah, 15 by 15 board, which is which is really nice. And he he explains in great details how the algorithm works, how the logic works works. And again, like the algorithm is extremely naive, and it's very simple. And this makes this algorithm uh, just uh, very easy to pick up. Even for me, that was that was quite simple. And also the logic, the algorithm uh, to define uh, 
to, to search for a group of stones and to a search for the liberties available for those for that group of stones to to answer the question whether the group can be captured or not is also very very small so this the entire rule set is encoded within just literally slightly more than a line than, than one page of code so it's really miserable so this is the entire code to play sort of a game Okay, so it's, it's, and it's already even uh, sophisticated a little bit. So uh, if, if we take just the rules, then we don't really need this, this two things. So all we need to for the rules is essentially this function. That's pretty much all about it. So this one single function, and this is enough to encode the, the entire rule set for Go, more or less. Okay, so uh, oh, sorry. Um, then he provides here he provides a uh, listings in the pseudocode which is extremely extremely helpful and i've been using this pseudocode to come up with, with my python python implementation so have a look at the count routine which calls which recurs to the search for nor north east south and west stones i have exactly the same thing here so here is the count routine and i do this this exact recursive calls and on king one that there was the limitation uh, in regards to the stack hence the number of connected stones that could be searched within the wally was limited uh, to the 20 256 bytes uh limitation for a stack on a 6502 uh cpu uh however here the length the, the size of the blocks might be whatever well that there, definitely that would be enough uh, of stack uh on the modern machines for that so th this this works much better on on, on the modern hard hardware with we with, with know those lim eliminations so yeah uh this count is extremely elegant uh very nice and ju just a fantastic function that it's just a treasure really so and especially if you're trying to figure out how it works it just is absolutely fantastic so uh, he also he also provides the uh, pseudocode for uh, evaluation for some look ahead and even mentioned the patterns believe it or not so uh, so what makes uh, Wally being intelligent so it just has the database of, of patterns that's around seven if I'm not mistaken and uh, depending on pattern uh, he uses the suggested move for that uh, particular pattern and this in theory should result in computer trying to surround your group of stones uh, if you're not trying to do anything so it's like you have you have a group of stones it would be trying to surround that group of stones i didn't yet uh, come to that point so i'm currently at the earlier version and by the way the wall itself was developed not just all in once but first it was just a random mover then it was some features has been added so uh, I'm currently at the state where it can uh, capture the group if he can and it would be trying to avoid his group being captured so this is a very basic thing and that, that works quite pretty nicely so yeah um, uh, so here here is the part of, this, of the pseudocode and also was somewhere yeah and here is the main part so the, here is the pseudocode for main part so this is the entire main loop right and this functions white effect black effect they are listed here and uh, I've copied the entire pseudocode here and this is the entire pseudocode for the entire game so it's really not not that big and it's really simplified it doesn't it doesn't rely on a particular implementation and uh, if you just blindly try to translate this to Python it will work uh, just right out of the box I tried <laughs> so you need to uh, think about some uh, some specifics so you have to make it work properly but anyway uh, it it allows you to play at least uh, almost legal game of go I say almost because if you're making a suicide move it just captures it and it's not protected from chaos because it doesn't yet have Zobris hashing to avoid repetitions in the position so that might be added as well another uh, limitation is that the computer is uh, capable is only capable of playing black stones so in go the weaker side uh, uh, moves first and the first uh, stone to move is black the first color to move is black and go in modern go and uh what else so yeah also it's, it's good it's a good idea to give some handicap stones uh to the engine so uh currently the limitation and the, the naive uh, part of wally is that it can't play with it with different color because the logic of considering the move is hard-coded uh based on the assumption that Sorry, that the computer is playing black or moving first so that's essential but 
this shouldn't be uh, this this shouldn't be uh, an issue because this can be optimized easily and uh, just generalized later on to make it play for both sites. So I believe that this essential uh, implementation, this naive implementation, that almost doesn't mean any sense from the perspective of uh, of the plane strength, uh, is extremely useful. And for, first of all, because for beginners, if you're a complete noob and go like me, uh, if you barely understand the rules then playing ver uh, versus such an opponent, uh, at least you have a chance, because if you're trying to play versus some different pr programs or even humans, you just get dist get crushed instantly. It's not fun, really. So it's really, like, uh, good for training, for understanding. And also it has some... And also this count counter-routine is, is very elegant and extremely useful to match uh, the groups of stones in, in an extremely elegant way. So this is it uh, in regards to what the Wally is. So well, it's not exactly Wally, and might it might not be ex the exact like behavior of the original program, obviously. But uh, I'm ta I'm using this as a basis. I'm highly inspired by this pseudocode, and this gives a a, 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 a direction, uh, an initial direction to me. And first, uh, I'm doing this in Python because I want to go for a text-based interface. I'll now show you how this works. Uh, later, the, the next uh, the next iteration of this exact same code with some possibly more generalizations and whatever I came up with during developing this version would have been JavaScript with a UI. So you could be uh, able to run this in browser. And it's, it's really, I, I believe now, I believe it's easier to just click the mouse on where you want to put a stone rather than type in the coordinates from the keyboard. But anyway, uh, still in Python, this seems like a, a little bit more straightforward, and I just don't need to think about anything, just can concentrate on the, on the pure logic. So yeah, um, now um, let's, I just want to demonstrate what is implemented so far, and this is going to be the basics uh, covered in the, in the following tutorial. So uh, I would have been making tutorials on what I've did so far, and by the time I would be improving this uh, until I, I, I reach the limit. And then we'll try to make it sort of finished, sort of a thin, completed sort of a thing. So um, let's start by, uh, I just want to show you how the pattern, uh, uh, how capturing works. So I'm running the program in here. Uh, so uh, yeah, another thing. So there are uh, various board sizes. So for instance, like five by five, six by six, nine by nine, uh, 13 by 13, 15 by 15. Uh, or maybe 16 or I don't know or 17 by 17 and but but the, the for tournaments in modern go uh, 19 by 19 and what I've discovered uh, while trying to play online versus some uh, go programs uh, that the smaller board is the stronger engine is and if if you're considering the bigger board then an engine is getting uh, weaker and weaker because you can't see the overall thing that human player can so yeah, that's another consideration. So nine by nine seems to be quite reasonable for a start. But again, um, uh, I'm not sure whether in this implementation or in the next one that would have been JavaScript, I'm, I'm going to add the feature of uh, user defining the board size because that sort of makes sense and just for tests as well. Okay, so anyway, um, let's have a look uh, what we got here. Uh, so here is the go ban or the board to play go. Um, it ha uh, by the way, it also has the offboard squares, they are not seen, but you see the sevens actually uh, represent the offboard squares. So yeah, um, uh, the offboard squares kind of like uh, helps you to, to capture because they uh, remove the liberties from, from the stones. For instance, like if we have a look at, uh, well currently, there, there, there is nothing on the edge, so yeah. But uh, let's consider we have one stone here and two stones here, then this stone would be captured because uh, this, 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 uh, uh, this, and this, and this are surrounding this one. So it has like one liberty, two, three, four. So two liberties are on board and two liberties are off board. And since there are no liberties, then it's it, it would be captured if this two stones placed here. So for instance, two black stones here and here. And here is the white stone. The white stone gets captured. So uh, board edge is extremely so uh, corners and board edges are extremely important in uh, when you're trying to capture or to 
uh, like uh, like uh, to surround the uh, uh, opponent stones. For instance, here. So here, uh, this O means o means white stone, and the hash symbol means the black stone. Uh, so computer is playing hashes, playing black symbols. And for instance, uh, if I try to make noobs move like I usually do, so for instance, if I try to escape from here, it's impossible because next move it just closes. So, but anyway, let's give it a try. So if I go h9, so I go h9, um, I go h9, oh my god, why didn't he, okay, yeah, uh, here, here is the point. Uh, so there, there, there was. <laughs> sorry, guys. This, this is okay. Uh, so there, there were, there were two, uh, two things here. So first, uh, next move, uh, computer square is gonna be captured. So if it's considering whether to, uh, so if it is uh, taking a decision on whether to consider the defensive action or the attacking action, he would consider the defensive action. And this might be horribly wrong, and this can be hard coded because on the situation uh, on the real game, this might be uh, different. But anyway, that's the way how well it works, uh, at least what I've realized from from this pseudo code. Um, so here, uh, you, th there was a threat, so uh, when there is only one liberty left for a stone, this is called Atari, just like the console name, like uh, <laughs> Atari 2600, something like that. So this is called Atari, I love this term, it sounds nicely. So Atari means that the next move, uh, you're gonna capture opponent's stone. So a uh, computer is black, sees this, and the very first thing he's trying to do, he is trying not to capture uh, opponents, uh, he's trying to avoid his stone of being captured, and this is why is because he still can capture this anyways. So even if I, uh, even if I put this, the, uh, even if I put the stone here, he would still capture right over in here. So just to show you that, so if I now say i9, for instance, and then he captures. So it's like I'm putting the square to i9, and he says that the only liberty my square has is here, so he just uh, takes away this final liberty, and eventually all the squares that uh, all the stones, my stones, has been captured, and he did he did achieve two major things. So first, uh, he won one, two, three, four, five, six, seven squares, uh, seven stones, and when it comes to counting the territory at the end of the game, uh, the number of stones you uh, have captured uh, is subtracted from the territory uh, uh, from the territory points uh, of that your opponent uh, has managed to uh, 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 to grab right so let's say opponent has grabbed 10 points by the end of the game and you've captured seven stones of the opponent so this would be 10 minus 7 so eventually the score for opponent would be 3 i'm not talking talking about the uh, the scoring's like kami term, there is a the term, term, uh, uh, term kami that means that uh, since uh, black is playing first, it has a, it has an advantage, so uh, white has uh, kami, which might be different, uh, and kami means just sort of a handicap in the score, but it's not a handicap in terms of mm, giving a handicap to opponents, just to make uh, is it's needed in order to make the game fair. So unlikely chess when white moves first and there is no compensation for that for black. So white is sh white should win in chess in theory in the perfect world. White should win because he has the first move. However, in Go this is not so. Uh, if you move black first, so you move first, this doesn't essentially mean that you want to that that you will win. So this doesn't give you. Uh, an, adv an advantage. Well, it, it does give you an advantage, but this advantage is compensated by what, by what is known as Kami. Okay, so when it comes to the scoring, to final scoring of uh, of the game, so this happens when two opponents has passed. And by the way, uh, you can pass during the game. Uh, the way of how to score uh, might vary uh, from country to country. So in China, in Japan, and in Korea, the, there might be some different rules. In in American Indonesia, there might be different rules, and there are lots of top, lo lots of materials on that. I'm not yet clear about those current systems, but th those are more likely for tournaments. And we can uh, and since uh, the nine by nine board, uh, in most cases, it doesn't care neither about kami. Uh, and 
and yeah, and, and hence the uh, all this all these scoring systems doesn't doesn't make that much much of a sense. So for now, they can be safely ignored because uh, no matter what the scoring system is, uh, it doesn't uh, change the winner, and it doesn't hence it doesn't change the strategy. So the strategy is is always the same regardless of the way of how to count it. So there might be the difference in how many points you win eventually. So you win by two points or by one point or by four points. But if you win, then you win. If you lose, then you lose. So yeah, um, that is what... Uh, that, that's, uh, that's, that's regarding uh, the scoring. So uh, I just want to make a few more moves. So now computer has captured my stones. And now what I will try to do, I will try to capture his group to show you how the capturing logic for the uh, opposite uh, side works. So I go D2, all right, so I want, so if I place, yeah, by the way, another interesting thing. So if I place the stone here, he connects and it would be uh, harder to capture. And uh, if, it's, if the move is not saving the currently, the current implementation by the time of this video, uh, if uh, so there are two ways when computer m makes moves consciously uh, so if it tries to uh, escape uh, from a terry escape from getting captured or alternatively if he's uh, if he is capable of capturing opponent's group the rest of the moves are currently made absolutely randomly so this is this is here, so just create in the random square, make sure it's on board, and if it's an empty square, then you just make it. So now it's complete random mover. But uh, because <laughs> because this uh, because of the small board, sometimes this random mover makes extremely nice moves that uh, are good enough to beat me. So yeah, uh, I'm so bad in Go that even the random mover can beat me. So yeah. Um, uh, now let's try to, uh, well, actually, if I go here, uh, then he protects and he would have been better. So, yeah, let's give computer a bit of a handicap here. So I go to E3 here, so E3, and he defends uh, just because he tries to escape from being captured. So now what I need, what else I need to do? So let's try to place this. Uh, place the stone here on d6 so d6 yeah by the way in regards to the coordinate system i didn't find uh, a standard so there are many ways of doing this and using this chess like notation is treated to be okay so i believe for now we can stick for that um okay so now c5 uh if any professional go players are watching this i'm extremely sorry for making such a dumb moves uh i'm just happy enough to to, to realize if the stones are disappeared, at least to figure out why that happened. So I just got captured because I ran out of liberty. So yeah. Uh, okay, so if I now put uh, put the stone here, uh, E5, so E5, and yeah, the next move I can capture. I can already capture. So the computer doesn't see this. Yes, he doesn't see this. It shouldn't be doing this really because it doesn't have any look ahead then that's the reason. So probably adding the look ahead is, is also on the cards. But anyway, F4 should capture all of these squares, because if I put, put, put a stone here, then these squares, this group, would have no liberties at all. So if I go F4, then yes, I just captured the opponent's, uh, uh, opponent's uh, stone. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, six seven and i've captured one two three four five so still he's captured two point two two more for him okay and now another interesting thing so uh you might be wondering. so i just i will now go to f2 so i now go to f2 and you might be wondering that why he's not actually defending from this and that's because of the algorithm so we have a look at the algorithm um uh so if the group has at least one liberty then choose a liberty that is not on the uh, on the line edge. So uh, what the heck? Yeah. So you you consider so you escape from a terry. So a computer would escape from a terry. So we have a terry here again. Like a terry is when um, there is only one liberty left, and I'm threatening to capture opponent's stone. So here, this stone is in a tarry because uh, three liberties are taken away. So I'm about to capture it. But you see that it doesn't uh, try to escape from a tarry because in this case, he would be captured anyway here and here because this is the line edge. So if, if, uh, 
if in order to escape from a tarry, he needs to put the, the stone uh, on the line edge, he is not going to be doing that, because that would uh, result in losing even more stones. So yeah, uh, what I can do here, so well I can probably, well let's capture, so E1, it's not the best ever move, but let, let's try to capture, so E1 and I capture his move, all right. So now, for instance, if I play here, then he captures me immediately. I'm not going to be doing that. So instead, I will try to capture. I will try to capture these two guys. So I go to G to G5. Okay, go into G5, and he 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 played somewhere. Okay, so uh, now let's go to H4. H4 and. Well, is this a sort of a bug? So what he just did is known as the suicide. Oh, yeah, and that's because, yeah, that's because I do not disallow this for, uh, yeah, I just don't disallow this is, is here, yeah. So it's sort of a bug, uh, sort of an illegal move, but uh, yeah, but it's just because of the random mover. All right, uh, th this, uh, so this, uh, Again, a, a good example of an illegal move in the game of Go. So this move is illegal because when you put a stone, it needs to have at least one liberty. This stone doesn't have any liberties. So if I uh, understand something, then the next move it should actually be captured away. So hopefully that's the case. And for now, I just want to play to H3. H3. Yeah, and you see it gets captured. So yeah, uh, my random move mover doesn't know about uh, the limitation that he can't place stones into the uh, if it doesn't have any uh, any liberties. So there uh, a routine checking for liberties uh, for a stone that you put on the board is has a, like sort of a in uh, like move legality checking like uh, to validate the input move should be added but for now we can just admit that all right so the next thing is here i believe yes i believe here so g2 go into g2 and again th th this is this 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 move was done randomly <laughs> yeah, this random mover is, is really interesting. So yeah, uh, the next move, this should get captured. I'm sorry for this, guys. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't test this yet, but yeah, that's just because the random mover <laughs> plays, <laughs> he puts the stones in the most unfortunate <laughs> places on the board. All right, so let's try to capture this one for now. So in order to do this, I need to put on a, on I2 and H1. So let's try I2 and next move, this guy should disappear. And they do. Okay, now let's go to H1. So place in here, and this one should disappear. And we got it. All right. Um, what else? What else? Um, so let's try to be. Well, if I put it here, yeah, he just captures instantly. So it's not the case. Well, um, nothing really much to, to play further on here so oh, I can play to e6 for instance so now I need to just to grab the territory and oh my god what did <laughs> what, did, what did he do <laughs> this is a, this is almost a suicide so f1 try to capture that okay so yes um, i2 what? I can't? Oh, sorry. I2 was already played. Uh, I'm sorry. I meant uh, not I2. I4. Sorry. I4. Yeah. And yeah, ju just to close him. So for instance, F, F5. F5, for instance. Yeah, it's strange that it doesn't doesn't put the, the <laughs> doesn't play here. Uh, so I just tried to build the the wall here to uh, surround my own territory, living last territory for opponent. So for instance, c6. All right. Uh, okay. Now this then this guy is doomed. So let's go for b1. No, I can't even. I can actually drop it for now. So yeah, let's let's continue being building building the wall. So b5 and b and a5 yes a5 okay and now these guys are gonna be dead so uh for instance a2 
Uh, oh, he captured my paw. <laughs> I managed to blunder. <laughs> I managed to blunder to a program that is so dumb. Oh my god. This is what happens, isn't it, guys? Uh, I was trying to surrender him here and, uh, and yeah, and here. But uh, this resulted in that he actually could have captured my stone. And he did instantly. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, it's, it kind of works. Okay. It kind of works. So, yeah, if I put it here, he would capture even more. So, yeah, I need to go to C1. Yeah, random mover is crushing me. Uh, yeah, another suicide move. So, yeah, this uh, this one would disappear in the next uh, in the next iteration. So, yeah, let's go A4. Uh, and, yeah, this is not good. So, B1. And after B1, I will capture all of these stones because they don't have any liberties anymore. All right, I got those stones captured. And what he does here is so... Uh, taking away his own territory spawns with the stones is incredibly bad thing. So uh, when this thing starts occurring, uh, you should start passing the moves. This is not implemented yet, and Wally doesn't seem to be doing that as well. So it's probably the matter of human player to decide where, whether whether to start. It's another thing to to take care of. But anyway, uh, so here. Um, well, uh, yes, since I've built the boor, uh, since I've built the wall, I can now pass the moves. So there is no way to pass other than just to place the stone where it already uh, is available. So let's go like A4, so it doesn't change the position. A4, A4, A4. Uh, well, I'm not sure why he doesn't do, doesn't seem to be B1. Ah, that's because... Yeah, it doesn't allow me doing so. I've already disabled that. So yeah, only if the board square. Uh, no, only if uh, the if square should. Yeah, it is allows me from doing that. Yeah, so it should be. So yeah, I can't do that. I can't do that. It was available earlier, but no. So here I would have passed passed the move, and as the opponent, uh, I think it's uh, well. He, he should he should play here. Well, okay. Actually, we can try to play a bit more. So if I play, if I grab even more stones, if I play to B7, for instance, to crush him completely. Uh, trying to uh, trying to grab this one. So A2. So grabbing. Uh, what? Did he just capture me? I'm not sure what has just happened. Okay, A6. Yeah, he's just trying to, he's just putting this to, to again, suicide moves. So this, this should disappear. Um, so let's go to B8. And yeah, yeah, he just, he just puts this suicide moves. And uh, B9. B9. Okay, okay, this guy is gonna get crushed. Well, let's, let's just leave, the, leave him for now. So, A, A9, for instance. And this, this is another suicide move. Okay, A7. That's just because this is a random mover. Okay, and this is another suicide move. So, let's deal with this guy for now. So, D4. And I'm not sure whether this is the suicide move. Yeah, prob probably was trying to escape from liberties, uh, to, to escape from Atari, but uh, he didn't take into account that. Yeah, so lots of work to, for improving this, but generally, like, the basics uh, of this sort of a thing kind of works. So I can't even try to capture these stones. So let's go, for instance, to C8. All The random mover allows you to do literally whatever you want to. Okay, so it just probably captured... Uh, and then it just drops back. Okay, let's leave that for now. So D8. Well, it's a bit of, a little bit strange why this is happening. So if I okay, if I go D9, that should be captured anyway. Yeah, now no, finally they get captured. Yeah, he just he just put uh, the random mover puts the squares to whatever empty squares. It doesn't care about. Yeah, so uh, the last square it left, the more suicide moves he makes. So that's the idea. But now I want to capture all of his stones here. So I go to um, yeah, for instance F8. Human player wouldn't allow you doing that. Yeah, he just keeps making suicide moves, but 
computer actually can allow you to do that okay and he has two eyes and that's a sort of a defense oh my god <laughs> he created <laughs> he created two eyes which is <laughs> <laughs> which is the structure to away from uh, getting captured and this is one of the very sophisticated things to consider because um, it's, it's one of the hard, hardest things for, for an engine to, to learn to teach the engine how to make so this this is known as ice because uh, since there, there are two spots uh, you can't capture so if all this would be uh, white stones then these guys would be captured because they don't have any liberties anymore but with this ice he has he always have one liberty all right and let's say if this is white stone this is white stone this is white stone you might wonder you can't get here because it's a suicide move but no in this case you can go there because it, you, it would result in capturing so uh, th there is another thing to, to bear in mind all right so let's still try to G8, so maybe he just uh, gets rid of this. Um, uh, he captured me. How could... <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, he, he just... Yeah, he captured me. And yeah, that's fair. <laughs> yeah. So, it's like, uh, even playing versus such a dump machine, I'm still capable of blundering. Uh, okay, so what else? What else can I do here? Probably nothing much. Yeah. Okay. Let, let's actually stop here. So, well, hopefully, uh, hopefully white should win. Okay. Because one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Uh, and I'm not sure if I calculate this one. Kind of this one, one, two, three, four, five, so 20 versus five, and also I've captured lots of squares. So yeah, this this is the total crush. Okay, so I hope it's clear, hope it makes sense, and see you, yeah, probably already in the next year uh, with this new series on how to create, how to program your own Go game. Starting with Python, then we go to JavaScript, and then we'll see what happens. So happy new year, happy new year, guys! This is from my side. Thanks for watching. Until the next time, and take care.